Um, we wanted to thank you for allowing us a few minutes uh, to talk to you about organ donation awareness. And in your bulletin, you will notice that it said that Rick's going to give his testimony. So um, being the good wife that I am, I said to him last week, I said, so do you, do you know what you're going to talk about? And he goes, yeah, I'm going to talk about this. And I go, no, no, don't talk about that. And he goes, well, I'm going to talk about this. And I said, no, don't talk about that. And I said, I'll write it down for you. So I wrote it down, and I came home from work, and he said, I've got your speech in there for you. So here I am. I guess I talk too much, right? Um, but we just want to share with you that April is Dash National Donate Life Month. Um, this, I'm Carol Parks. This is my husband, Rick. And we joined New Holland, and then pandemic hit. So we don't know a lot of people's names. So we're hoping that we'll get to know more as things are opening up. Um, but my husband, Rick, here is a double lung transplant patient. Um, he was transplanted on June the 25th, 2012. And as with all major uh, appliances that you buy, they give you a warranty. So uh, Rick has outlived his warranty. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, in 2011, he and I were doing some yard work. We lived in Jefferson, Georgia, and uh, so we're out cleaning in the yard, and he started coughing, and he didn't stop, and he coughed, and he coughed. Um, we went to the doctors, and they said, oh, he has COPD, and sure enough, he had smoked when he was younger, and I kept saying, no, it, it can't be COPD. It's, it's different. It's not COPD. What we did know, um, our life as it was, that normal changed. I don't think you ever have a normal, but that it, we definitely changed. Um, he had to quit working as a pharmacist. He was short of breath all the time, and he used oxygen 24-7. So everywhere we went, we drug an oxygen tank. And no doctor could tell us what was wrong. What they could tell us is that our health, his health was going down, and it was spiraling down fast. Um, over the next several months, we had numerous hospital visits. We were in the emergency room. Um, saw one consult, consulting position after another. And finally, after I had a primary care physician who listened to me, and he goes, you know, Carol, I don't think it's COPD either. So um, we fought with our insurance company, and we ended up at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. After a week-long appointment, um, they diagnosed him with a disease called bronchiolitis obliterans. And it's um, bottom line where the small airways in your lungs are hardening. And um, they told us at that time, they don't know what caused his. Normally you see it in somebody that's inhaled smoked or a, a chemical that's not normal in the environment. But they could tell us that he had 18 to 24 months to live. And they could tell us that the only cure or the only treatment would be a lung transplant. And um, with that, they said, and normally our lung transplant patients survive five years. Um, so after more tests and con uh, more doctors and tears and prayers, he went on the transplant list. And after 45 days, we were called and we were told on the phone that they had a possible match on paper. And they wanted us to get to Jacksonville. Now, when we had met with all of them, they had wanted some things from us. They wanted Rick to treasure that organ that he was going to get. So that meant he needed to do what the doctor said. He needed to uh, have financial aid that would pay for his uh, medicines because he was going to be on a lot. And sure enough, um, that meant that I had to continue working because we needed my insurance. And they wanted Rick three hours, not more than three hours away from the clinic. And we lived six hours away. So we had an appointment in, that was in June. We had an appointment in July, and we were going to move him down to Florida. I was going to stay and work, and then he was going to wait on the call. So when we got a call in 45 days, we were not prepared. We are running through the house, and we're, it was on a Sunday, and we're throwing things in a suitcase, and um, we're crying, and we're praying, and our daughter and her family happened to be there, and he's telling the grandchildren goodbye, and everybody knew that he may not come back home. There was a high possibility. So with a lot of tears and crying, and we left Jefferson, and our daughter drove us through Tropical Storm Debbie. 
So we were, had torrential rains, we had um, winds, we had tornado watches, and the whole time the doctor's calling, when are you going to be here, how far out are you? Um, in the meantime, we're making phone calls. I'm calling into work saying, I don't know when I'll be back. Um, we're calling family. Our son was on a mission trip in Haiti, so we were trying to get a message to him, and his wife was trying to get an airline ticket from Pennsylvania to get to Florida, and so with the good Lord's help, Matthew was able to talk to his dad. He climbed up on top of a chicken coop. It was a tin chicken coop roof, and he got phone connection and got to talk to Rick before he went to surgery. But we had a, um, as we're driving, our daughter said, you know, it's time to stop for gas. Gas light's been on. We got to stop, Dad. And Rick goes, no, I don't want to stop. Let's keep going. God's got this. So with even more anxiety, we kept on driving, and we drove into the emergency room and ran out of gas right there in front of the door. So God did have it, and he got us to Mayo. After a 13-hour surgery, him living in Florida for three months, um, a lot of medical care, a lot of follow-up, we are so blessed to be standing here today. And God has it. He's had it. With us knowing that this is donation month, we wanted to uh, tell you about our story, and we wanted to tell you how important it is that you're a donor. Um, Our donor came from Orlando, Florida. We don't know his name um, or her name. Um, We've sent several letters uh, to the family just thanking them for their graciousness that they signed that letter saying, yes, my loved one can be an organ donor. But some stats that I want you to take away today, there's um, at least 114,000 people in the United States waiting on a transplant. Um, Every 10 minutes, a name is added to the transplant list. And on average, 20 people die every day waiting on a transplant. Um, Things that can be transplanted, the number one organ that's transplanted is kidneys, and then you have the pancreas, livers, heart, and then the lungs is the least transplanted organ, and the average wait time for an organ is three to five years. Ours was 45 days. God had it. God had it. Um, one donor can save eight lives, and in addition to the other organs that we mentioned, um, you can in- transplant intestines, skin, tissue, and eyes, and in 2014, the national organization that monitors organs, um, added hands and faces to the transplant list. Um, With being a transplant family, we know that um, life is so precious. We knew it before, we know even more so now, and we know how fragile your health is, just how quickly things can change. And we know that it's important that we share our story and let everybody know what can you do, you can share, our story. You can register in your state. You can talk to your family and friends. Let them know what your desires are if you should pass suddenly. Our son's a pastor in Pennsylvania, and he recently had a a teenager that died a very tragic accident. And um, so Matt was with with the family, you know, trying to support them. And when it came down to, we're getting ready to take your son off the ventilator, what do you want to do? And that family said, with no prompting from Matthew, they said, we want to donate because of Matthew's dad. So that to us is just a blessing. Um, you'll see on the screen that April the 16th, Friday, is Blue Green Day. That's the colors for organ donation. And they're encouraging everybody to wear those colors just to promote uh, organ awareness. Um, we have a table over in the Welcome Center with a lot of little freebies, a lot of little or, uh, information about organ donation. We want you to come by and pick it up. But um, there's a button that says, uh, don't take your organs to heaven, because heaven knows we need them here. And we are just so thankful that somebody took that to heart, and that I have Rick, and we're glad to be here. So um, thank you for allowing us the time. <laughs>